Your paper is a fascinating account of initiatives in two Indonesian cities to reduce flooding, especially for those on the riverbank. Could you tell us a little bit about these two cases? We have one initiative which is in the city of Solo, uh, in central Java, uh, and this is a city uh, which has regular flooding uh, every year in which many of the riverbank communities uh, are affected. And what the government did there during the uh, term of the, of the mayor, uh, Joko Widodo, who has actually now become the president of Indonesia, uh, initiated a, a, a series of um, dialogues to, to talk with the river uh, uh, riverbank settlers about uh, solutions and uh, alternatives with the idea of being able to move people uh, away from danger. And so uh, through this process, they were able to uh, offer uh, a lot of different, uh, offer a, a compensation for them to move, but allowed the uh, th that community to take decisions on their own. In the other case, uh, in the city of Surabaya, which is the second largest city in Indonesia, uh, we had a, a case which uh, started off very well. There was engagement between the community and they negotiated um, a possible alternative where instead of uh, being relocated, they could move back uh, the their houses uh, three to five meters to be able to create an access road and also um, restore some of the river edge. Um, however, what we saw was that over time, um, conflicts between different jurisdictions of government, the provincial and the city government, uh, meant that there was a breakdown and there was miscommunication and in the end, there has been uh, no uh, resolution and so the, the, the community is still living in this um, sort of state of vulnerability without, um, without a, a solution. In the case of Solo, why did so many households choose to move away from the flooded zones? Flooding is uh, something that happens regularly. So I think that, that the, the community there knew that they were living in, in vulnerability, um, but they were given uh, options or they were, they were uh, engaged with government about finding a solution. So I think what's important there was that they were able to um, enter a dialogue the government was able to offer them uh, uh, things that uh, would reduce their vulnerability, but also um, reduce some of their social and economic vulnerability. So they were um, offered to um, legalize their tenure in their new locations. Uh, they were able to, uh, um, by becoming legal citizens, this is another part component of that, they could then access a lot of the uh, city services and social welfare. So I think an important component of why the, the community moved is because they, they, they saw that it was a better, uh, you know, the best solution for them. Are there some general lessons we can draw from these two case studies in regard to relocation? There's no one-size-fits-all solution and uh, the ability uh, for the uh, government to in in both cases actually um, to offer uh, sort of a flexible uh, process which created a number of so, you know flexible solutions that you know would work for the government and could work for the community um, because you know, it's going to depend on the context. Understanding that there are uh, social and economic vulnerability issues uh, on top of the, you know, the, the physical vulnerability, um, and if policies can can include components or, or, or have a sort of multi-dimensional uh, sensitivity to that, I think that, that that's a very important thing. Civil society, when they uh, engage, they're they're organized. They have ideas, they can put forward proposals, and that the strength of that community, um, uh, uh, the way that they engage with government is very important. In these cases, how can urban policies contribute to building resilience for communities at risk from flooding? Urban policies are very important. The process through which policies are implemented is uh, more important. The way in the Solo and, and even in the Surabaya case where there was a commitment to um, participation, to uh, working together with, uh, with residents and, and listening to their needs, that process of developing the policy um, I think is what we call good governance.